Clark, how did you get in here, Clark? How did you get in here? Lex, you have no security at this facility. Clark, where are you going? I'm talking to you. I gotta find Lana! Don't you do this! Uh, wherever. I was ex we were expecting a standing ovation, but it's fine. Yeah. It's fine. We will come back. Yeah. It's bad. There we go. Thank you. Thank you. Much better. Thank you, Michael. Yes. All right, guys. Well, Look, thank you Mom. so much for being here on this Easter Sunday of Awesome Con. So, you know, happy Easter if you happy celebrate. Happy Easter to everybody. And, and happy April Fool's Day. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, so it it's is, not right? Easter? I <laughs> Not, not for you, not for you. Tom was there. So, um, I, you know, everybody here is very excited about Smallville, but I'm also excited about your full careers. So I wanted to ask a couple of questions about other things you're doing as well. Um, you, Tom, are on Lucifer right now. Yeah. Thank you. And uh, I know it can be interesting coming into a show that's already going. It's in the third season, and you've come in with a new character. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, I think the original idea was um, on purpose that, that Lucifer, and, at the end of season two, if you guys watch it, they got a little comfortable with each other, and the whole idea was for Lieutenant Pierce to come in and shake everything up on, you know, on many different levels. And so it was fun to be the disruptor uh, for this season. And I know there's a big reveal. I don't know how much... He told me. To... He told me what happens. <laughs> so in the final episode... <laughs> but, but he did what... tell me. Yeah. Was it, was it interesting getting to play like a highly respected character and then have kind of a, a, t a turn to that character? Yeah, it was fun. It was very different than Clark. And initially, when I looked at the character, I thought, you know, let's do something very different. Um, you know, let's maybe try to figure out maybe what Lex would do with this character. And then I realized that was a bad idea. <laughs> and then... <laughs> you called up Michael and you were like, wait. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it was fun to play a character who was a little more ahead of the game and, and making the moves as opposed to a character like Clark who was sort of just sort of a, a lot of times a step behind of what was going on, especially with what Lex was doing. So. Cool. And Michael, um, now this is uh, different than Smallville, but you played, obviously, Lex, very serious character some of the time, but in Breaking In, you oh played a God, very you different... In. I had to do it. <laughs> that was a fun character. Have you guys, has anyone seen that show? <laughs> because that? that's yeah. a crazy different character, and well, you have a very good comedic you know, aspect, so please talk about that. I like doing comedy, and I like doing drama, but uh, you know, I was on Smallville for seven years, so after it ended, I got all these dramatic offers for like, I was telling him for like, they did a bone spinoff. And I go, nah, you know, I that just... show didn't work. Yeah. Well, I didn't, I, it was, you know, it's long hours, it's dramatic, and I want to do some comedy. So my friend was doing a pilot, and he goes, hey, come and do this one role. It's like one minute long, you're in the pilot. And I did it, and I dyed my hair like red, and I wore Uggs and tight jeans, and got to really be silly. And then they offered me a six-year deal for the show, and I was like, no, I just don't, don't, I don't want to dye my hair. First it's bald, then it's dyeing your freaking hair. <laughs> so I, um, I did a season of that, and then I went and directed my uh, first film back in the day, which is, you can find it, it's a very raunchy, fun comedy, <laughs> with Marina Baccarin and Nick Swartz, and big plug. But I like, do, I like doing, mixing it up, you know? It's fun. Yeah, and shout out to Indiana folks, because I went to Indiana University, so. Who's hey, you were, go she was smarter than me. I couldn't get in. <laughs> I went to Western Kentucky University. Great school, but didn't need a high GPA. <laughs> Just didn't. I, I'll let you speak to that. So, um, but Tom, you've also done some interesting work in film. For instance, mm. Cheaper by the Dozen with Steve Martin. Yes, very challenging yes. role, very challenging role. Do you, do you have any uh, good Steve Martin stories, anything? Um, yeah, the, one quick one. Michael had worked with Steve before, so I got the little heads up that, um, you know, Steve's a great guy and, and everything. And one day I was walking back from set, we were shooting a location, I heard someone playing a banjo, and I walked around one of the trailers, and there was a horse with its head over, its, over the fence, an inch away from a banjo, and I sort of followed the horse's head to the banjo and up, and there's Steve Martin playing a banjo with a horse that far away. And it was just, it was a very comedic moment. And when he finished, I said, you know, when did you start playing the banjo? And he said, well, about 20 years ago, I thought if I started playing the banjo right now in 20 years, I might be good at it. <laughs> so that's Steve Martin. So, and, yeah. the, and the question is, was he? Was he good at it? Yes, he's very good at it. Oh, there you go. He's very good at it. <laughs> I remember when I met him, he goes, I, I wasn't even paying attention. He goes, so tell me about this Smallville. <laughs> and I was like, what? He goes, never seen it. <laughs> And I, so I brought him a whole bunch back in the day when we did this movie. I brought him a whole bunch of VHS tapes of Smallville. <laughs> and he signed my jerk poster. So that was cool. And then when That's I awesome. worked with him, he goes, so you work with Rosenbaum. 
that guy. <laughs> he was like, he probably did. <laughs> was he like, that guy, I hear he does a pretty good Christopher Walken. Yeah, right. <laughs> that's one thing on set, we would always, that's what got us through. Like, even at the convention, it's fun, but it's nice to, like, have my old cohort here, so because we're always laughing, we're, you know, we're holding each other like with pictures, and he's like rubbing my back, and I'm like <laughs> scratch, and we're trying not to laugh while we're doing it, but we're enjoying the moment. I mean, not sexually enjoying it, <laughs> but uh, but we would always do all sorts of fun stuff on set, like dueling uh, Christopher Walken's, dueling Keanu Reeves, like in the scenes, and the directors are always like, "Come on, Welly, Rosenbaum, do the scene." There are a couple good stories about that. One. I don't remember what the scene was, what we were talking about, but it was one of those moments where, you know, Clark, like kind of like we were joking about before, shows up in Lex's office out of nowhere, and, you know, we get closer as we talk to each other, we're face to face, and I said a line, and Rosenbaum, who's, you know, the camera's behind him, just looks at me, he goes, you should say that again, that wasn't good, that wasn't good, just say it again. And I remember going like, really? And he goes, yeah, just say it again. And I said it again, he goes, that was better. And then we continued. We had, we had little things, and as the series progressed, we would both do, we'd have non-verbal gestures. Like if, one, if our take was just shit, we trusted each other. I'd go, Clark, how many times have I told you? You can trust me. And he would look at me and go. <laughs> or he'd give me a wink. Like, that means you suck. Do it again. <laughs> how many times have I told you? You can trust me. <laughs> Double wink, you know? I mean, it was just, it was hilarious. The director's like, we got it. And Tom's like, no, we don't. <laughs> And then we had a Steve, Steve, our wardrobe guy, he was this, uh, uh, what would you say, eccentric gay man who would always be like, oh my God, you're going to let that take go, you should definitely do another yeah, take. Steve that would sometimes awesome. say, you need to go again. And the directors would get mad, they're like, who is he? He's the wardrobe guy. <laughs> and he's like, I know better than you, trust me. <laughs> so, so the directors would think you had it, but you'd say, no, I don't think so, but you then got to direct a little bit, so yeah. can you talk about that? Yeah, I really enjoyed that. It was fun, and you know, obviously already knowing the cast and sort of getting a better sense of why sometimes the, the directors ask actors certain things, because it's not always about you as, as the actor. I learned that lesson pretty good. Um, but when Michael directed, it was pretty funny because he was very excited. And we did this scene where I, Lana was leaving Clark for some time period, and the camera's on me, and Michael liked to sit behind the camera to be closer to the performance. And so as, as Kristen walked by the camera, and like, this is Michael, Michael to him goes, and she's walking, and she's walking, and she's walking, and I'm like, is she getting taller? What are you doing? What are you doing? The, the stairway to heaven is opening up. Right. She's, she's you know, going up. That was funny. I remember once when I was directing, and you know, uh, Tom had directed a couple episodes, and I was directing an episode. Do you remember this? I told you the story. So, Allison, the dolly grip, the dolly broke, lost a wheel, something happened. You know what a dolly is, you push it along with the camera. And Allison's belt broke, and I was behind on the scene. And Tom walks in there. Do you remember this? Yeah. You go, dude, what's going on? Come on, man, I want to get home, all right? What, what are we doing here? And I go, and I just, I thought he was serious. And I'm like, dude! Allison's belt broke, the dolly broke. What are you, Stanley Kubrick? Give me a break. And he goes, he goes, bro, bro. I'm totally kidding, bro. Come on. What's wrong with you? I'm like, sure. okay. And then I got one more story. Sorry, I know you have questions, but no, you Michael ahead. did a, there was an episode, I don't know if you guys saw it, where uh, Lex Luthor became president. Huh. And he comes in. You are a dick. <laughs> and he, he come, Michael comes in. And I don't know if I was directing or Glenn was, anyway, somebody was directing. And there's a podium. Marshall. Marshall for uh, Rosenbaum to stand behind. And we do the rehearsal and Rosenbaum's like, um, <laughs> I remember you being like, I don't need to say the fucking words because I need to get out of here. So am I lit here? Cool. So then they set up the lights and we, sorry. Then we set up the lights and 50 minutes later, the Rosenbaum comes in and they're like, we're going to shoot the first one. He's like, no problem, no problem. He gets up there, by the way, it's a two page monologue speech. And they go, ready? And you go, where are the teleprompters? <laughs> and we were like, what? And he goes, I'm the fucking president. Where are my teleprompters? <laughs> and I, we were like, wait a minute, wait a minute. Did you learn the dialogue? He goes, why would I learn the dialogue? <laughs> president, I'm the president. Presidents don't memorize, especially our president now. <laughs> <laughs> right? I was, and uh, didn't you make me wear a toupee or like a, a 
green, no, green, um, the green, uh, visual Oh, the effects. green visual effects suit, just, just so you could see me hopping around like a stupid <laughs> frog. We convinced Michael we needed a green screen shot. We put him in a full green tight leotard, and you can only see his face, and we got what we needed. It made and my package just, like, look bigger. We had a couple minutes, so we're like, this could be fun. So we asked Michael, like, we asked him, we're like, okay, and you're going, and you're getting shorter, you're shorter in the cameras, and you're like, this is, why am I doing this? We're, now turn around, you go, why do I have to turn around? It's green. <laughs> no, not only that, but I'm hanging up on this thing in green on these wires, like this green, bald, ugly, whatever. That's what I was. And I look, and I could see Tom and the director and the other guys just laughing behind the camera. And I'm like, put me down! Put me down now, I'm done, I'm wrapped. I wrapped myself, I'm wrapped, I'm done for the day. And I did. Yeah. Dude, and we always joke, Tom, we said this yesterday, but if Tom was in a bad mood, because you, you work 14, 16 hours a day, every day for seven, 10 years, 10 months a year, sometimes you get a little, you know, your mood's not great. You don't sleep, something happened, it's late, they're changing scenes around, you know, you're stressed. Yeah, poor Whatever. Us. Poor, but you know, <laughs> shit happens. Sorry for the shit, young man. Um, <laughs> but, you know, things happen, and, and Tom would come in, and you could you just tell, Tom, you always had that look on your face that, the lip would close, you know, like that welling look that, are we ready? Are we ready to do this? And if I came in and I was in a bad mood, he, everything would be just perfect for him. He would see that I was upset and go, <laughs> and you would start Because in my head, I'm like, this lucky guy, what's he so mad about? <laughs> because, but I was in the same thing. That's, like, you can't like occupy the same anger yeah. level at the would, same point. And I would mock yell. Like I wasn't really yelling, but I'm like, what are you looking at? I gotta be up at 4 a.m. so they shave my head, cut me at least three times. I gotta put three layers of makeup on my head so I can, I'm a freak! Where are the teleprompters? Where are the teleprompters? <laughs> See, you guys, you guys thought he was acting as Lex, but he was just that angry yeah. all the time because of the makeup. <laughs> I mean, my God, my God. Happy Easter. Oh, man. It's like, you know, I, I yeah. had questions, but now I just want to hang out backstage with you guys during I mean, we Smallville. Can, we, we this can, is ridiculous. We can do this all day. You know, it's funny is we, we do, but I, I, would, I want to hear it, but they're going to have questions, aren't they? They are going to yeah. have questions, yeah. Do you no, like I, that? I like yeah. when they have questions. Yeah. I, do, I do want to give a couple of quick shout-outs to sure. some other things Michael has done, because he's making all these you know, references to not, not enjoying things sexually, but he does something. There you go. See? There you go. There you go. Speaking of inside of you, yes. <laughs> Michael's you. podcast, that sounds kind of a little bit like an innuendo, but how did you start doing that? I want to yeah, hear about that. I would never do it. You, know? you were on it for like oh. an hour and a half. <laughs> we got half a million hits, <laughs> listens with him. Yeah, people love listening to us talk and reminisce and like, you know, he was always telling me like, dude, you should be, you should interview people. He's like, you always have things yeah. for me. Throughout the seven years, you'd always say, dude, you should be doing this. Like he was my agent, you know? <laughs> and uh, he was like, you know, you have a knack for that. So when people were telling me, so I said, what the hell? Why not do a podcast? And then I started to really like it because it became therapy for me. And I realized it became therapy for the audience because I was asking questions to celebrities and athletes and all these people, real stories and about their anxiety. Kristen Bell was just on, she talks about her depression and things like, and it was just, it was just really cool hearing real, you know, these people like sort of be vulnerable. And so now it's kind of taken off and we got like, we're doing Justin Hartley and, um, uh, you know, Henry Winkler, the Fonz was on and just tons of people. So. Check it out on iTunes. It's called Inside of You with Michael Rosenbaum. I think you'll really dig it. It's fun. It's free. I, I did see the one with these two, and it was it was a lot of fun. So yeah. Yeah, he's good. Yeah. So and now I I got a got a couple more quick questions before we open it up. One is, and my boyfriend would kill me if I didn't say he's a huge fan of Draft Day because oh, yeah. he's from Cleveland. Oh right on. Thanks. So uh, what was I love it the like? Movie. Yeah, it was it's it's a fun movie, and um, you know, Man of Steel connection. What was it like working with Kevin Costner? That was that? pretty cool. Um, I kind of did the movie because I wanted to meet Kevin Costner. Nice. Um, and then we got to work together. He was very kind, and uh, I think I, I messed up my first take of dialogue, and I was really pissed. Like, just like, and I'm really mad at myself because I look like an idiot. And he came over to me, he goes, don't worry, just don't be mad at me when I mess up my lines. And that just really helped me sort of just calm down. And I think we got some good stuff. That's a movie that actually, when it's on, I watch it. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. I like, like, I like that movie. Yeah, I do too. You know what's funny is like, 
I don't know how other actors feel, but, but you and I, I think, are the same like that. When, when, when we're working with our idols sometimes, when I was working yeah. with Stallone, how could I not be starstruck? This is a guy who was Rambo and Rocky, and like I'm sitting here thinking, I got, oh, oh, I can't even think of my line. I'm just thinking, I got to get him to sign my R Rambo lunchbox. <laughs> That's all I'm thinking. And you know, he's like, hey, how you doing? What's going on? What are the dots on your face for? I'm like, oh, it's CGI. He's like, you look like Pippi Longstocking with the dots all over. I'm like, all right, well, nice to meet you, Sly. And I, and I did this thing called the gay spider, where Sly's hands on the counter, and I just put your hand right here. And I would just go, beep, beep. and he goes, hey, what, what, what is that? I go, oh, it's the gay spider. He goes, like, yeah, all right, well, hey, keep your hands to yourself, all right? <laughs> I swear that's to God, great. it was awesome. Yeah, oh, it was man, that's, that's what great. Michael does when he's starstruck. Oh, well, now, Michael, you've worked with one of my idols, Andrea Romano, Andrea doing Romano. The Flash. Yeah. So, you don't know who that is. <laughs> he's like, uh -huh, Epic voice sure. director and casting, yeah, retired now. Sadly. I've heard of The Flash. You sure? <laughs> yeah, she's. You do the voice for it? I do the voice for The Flash for, yeah. for years. Oh, well, congratulations. Please, please tell us about it, yeah. Please, please tell us what that's like. I'll introduce you to Andrea. She, you should do some animation. It's brilliant. I'd love it. People love animation. I just and and that series was just phenomenal. I mean, again, it's like we talk about Smallville, how the quality is so important. And in that show, it was just it looked great, and the characters were all great. And they let Flash be funny. I, you know, add humor to it. And she's the most wonderful director there is. Really, she's a great talent. So we're gonna roll over to Smallville now. I well, got I got a question for you. Mm -hmm. I love the red kryptonite, Clark. I feel like you got to stretch your acting oh, yeah. in a different Sexy. way. Sexy. How, yeah. how did you, what, did you enjoy that? What was it like being a different kind of Clark? Um, that was, uh, that was probably just closer to who I am as a person. Well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, it was fun to sort of act out some of that rage and um, sort of hostility. I think that was probably always in Clark anyway. Um, but you know, he just hadn't really gotten there yet to express it, but yeah, it was fun. It's always fun to do something different. I mean, I think one of the worst things we did um, was, um, <laughs> well, not that we did on the show, but watching you be Zod flying through the air, that was probably one of the worst things. Why do you have to bring up all these things? <laughs> this is like therapy for me, I'm bringing it up. Bro, they brought him on remember? these wires one day outside and <laughs> he comes and like, What was I wearing? He's, he's wearing a long, Coat and they made it for me. It's like I think and I still he's, have. He's trying to be all serious and he's very unbalanced. He had to stay very sort of on these wires from like 40 feet, and all of a sudden he gets about 10 feet off the air, and his body just starts to turn like this, and we're all the wrong way. And he goes, "What am I doing? Why am I turning?" <laughs> Imagine me floating. I'm like trying to be serious. I've been coming to tell him. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I never felt cool, ever! Well, it's strange when you're playing these characters where then they show these alter egos of these characters. And what was my first line when I landed? <laughs> How did we know? We laughed every take, we almost didn't get the scene. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> Neil Tazad. <to> <laughs> you remember that? Yeah. I remember just going, no, I can't watch this. Like, I, I could see him, that's what made me laugh. I could see him going, <laughs> On my close-up, I'm like going, powerful Zod, and you're like... <laughs> He's like, you look like such an idiot. I'm like, oh. It looked on, a lot man. better on the show. You know, it, it came off very park. imposing yeah. on the show, and you yeah. were an imposing character most of the time. But I do want to ask, there were a few times <laughs> when you got to be a little softer Lex or a, or a nicer Lex. Did you ever wish for an actual redemption for him on the show or more of that? You know, I just felt like it was seven years of a character, right? No. You have to, you can't just become evil right away. And the, the backstory with the father, the overbearing father, and living in a castle, and losing his hair in a meteor shower, and his mother dying, and his brother dying, and all these things, and his best friend lying to him, that's why I became evil, your fault. <laughs> it's and, true! Yeah. There was a little, there was a, a beat there where Lex and Lana got together, and I felt like Lex was trying to get a little redemption through that. And he did. <laughs> <laughs> just, just a little, just a little redemption. <laughs> you know what, though? I mean, those episodes, Inside of you. No. <laughs> those episodes like Lexmas and episodes where you could see like this character, this was this life he could have had. 
And that's what the, the tragic thing is, is he really wanted to have a normal life, but he couldn't. Like, he fought everything. They always say, like, 50% of you is genetic, and you can't really change, but the other stuff you can change. And so I felt like he was changing all that other stuff in his genes and his DNA. It was just something, and, and everybody kept screwing him over, so it was kind of a tragic story. But, I mean, I liked, I, I liked being nice and sweet better than being in a freaking straitjacket. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> My gosh, I dude. I mean, I went nuts. Imagine being in a straitjacket all day for weeks and weeks and just this, oh, the music at the end of that episode with like Johnny Cash. It's like my eyes are all black. I'm just like, I was turning into that guy. <laughs> Again, you thought he was acting, but it was just the wardrobe. Yeah, I was, I started to freak out. But, but that was really impressive. And I have to say, it was, the, it was the lying and also having to have a dad with that hair that probably made you evil. Yeah, and, and, and you'd always well, got great amazing hair. hair. And by the way, oh, this is a great thing. What John Glover taught Tom and I is how to touch someone. This was the weirdest thing for me as an actor because I, I trained and I did all those things, but I never, John Glover taught me something real. Uh, come over here. What's your name again? Emily. <laughs> Emily. Emily. Come here, Emily. Well, don't fall. He's caring. But so, like, normally in a scene you would say, Emily, I'm going to tell you one more time, okay? Yes. And then something bad's going to happen. So try to listen. Right? That's, that's what I'm saying. But John would walk in and he'd be like, Emily? <laughs> <laughs> listen to what I'm telling you. Something, something, you know what I mean? He would touch us, and at first I was like, I was like, oh, what are you doing? Oh. I sincerely hope lots of people are filming this. <laughs> but I, but I loved it, and then I started doing it. I started, hey, Emily, come here for a second, please. And I started doing this season like four, and a guest star would come and I go, what have I told you about this? And the director would go, uh, Michael, that's just weird. It doesn't. <laughs> That doesn't work. You, you, don't touch the guest star. I'm like, well, no, John doesn't. It's like, yeah, well, you're his son. It's just this is weirder. Than that. See, if, if I do that, I'm going to get booed off stage. So, no, <laughs> like no. Michael, I'll be do. like, you're never allowed to moderate again. I'm sorry. You can touch me. <laughs> I think there was one time probably where you were going through this phase where we had a Lex Clark thing and you walked up, put your hand on my shoulder, and I was like, what are you doing? I was like, what are you doing? I'm trying new stuff, man. <laughs> I'm like, are you acting? Like, what are you doing? <laughs> but that does bring me to my next point, which is we're going to have some audience questions. Yeah. No touching the guests, no throwing things at the guests, no asking for autographs or photographs. You can see them downstairs on the floor for that. No happy birthdays. Keep your questions precise and quick. Yeah, but please don't throw anything. Ple yeah, please don't. It happened. It see happened. Anything it yeah. happened. Yeah, oh yeah. It was, it was funny, but it was not, not so good for me. Um, so who has a question out here? Do we we have a we're, li we're lined up. We're lined. Hey, oh. we're Wherever you are, just go with one of you. There you, don't you go. don't have to yell. We're lined up! This side first. I'm pointing to you right there. Go ahead. All right, first I just want to finish my thought. Because of you, Tom, and your betrayal of Clark, I went out, got a dog, and named him Clark Kent, and I endure him, so thank you. I'm so happy I could help. <laughs> so, She's allowed to touch him. Uh, all right, so, yes. So I'm um, re-watching Smallville, and my question is for Tom. Something I notice is that with Lana, it seems like Clark's abilities always get in the way. It seems like he's always scared that he's going to hurt her both emotionally and physically. But then when he gets with Lois, he embraces it like all the way through. So what do you think has changed in the character that allows for that? I think it was a certain um, matter of just maturity. I think we've all gone through those awkward situations early in life where you're not really sure how to handle a relationship and on many different levels and as you get to know yourself a little bit more and maybe what you what your wants and desires are and even more importantly sometimes what you don't want I think that that allows you a sense of wisdom where you can then relate to someone in a different manner that is more um, I don't know more more not emotional but more just a real connection and I think that you kind of found a, a more mature connection with Lois and Clark thank you yeah. hey that's it what did, what did I say? Sounded right. Ugh. Sounded clear. <laughs> hey guys, so I just wanted to, I just wanted to thank oh, you guys real quick for go. being so fun and cool in the photo ops. Um, and I'm a firm believer that Lex could have been, could have had a less ruthless ending if he had gotten a few more hugs in his life. 
So if you guys could create your own Smallville alternate universe like the one we saw on the show, what would that setting look like? And what would you change about your characters, how they grew up and evolved, and how they turned out in the end? Preferably with a non-villainous happy ending, but if you want to break my heart again, like, that's up to you. You got I'm one just, minute. I'm just, I'm just picturing this whole thing. I feel like, like I'm in high school again. I, I, I don't know the answer. <laughs> I'm just picturing Clark going in and being like, Lex, do you need a hug? <laughs> and I keep picturing it for some reason just a sea of bald people. <laughs> Everyone's bald. Everyone's in bathing suits. We're all embracing the sun. We're getting tan as white bald men. Oh, I'll get that later. And life is good. Um, uh, go ahead, answer that, Tom. Yeah, I do, the whole alternate universe thing is so, it, you know, it's, I think it's a Pandora's box because mm -hmm. If you, start, if you start to believe that there's one, then there's more than you can count. So I think there's different versions. I think in some ways, flashbacks or like when characters hit their heads and you know, they go into some sort of dreamlike state, you get to explore some of those things in a lot of different um, ways. But I don't know, I mean, who knows, maybe an alternate universe of Smallville n nobody would like. <laughs> so I think let's just keep it the way it is. My profile, my neck looks really good. <laughs> Your alternate universe would just be a mirror, just, so know. you could just look at yourself. I'm sure you can see it later on YouTube, too, so. Yeah, blame it on Dayquil. Over here, please. Thank you. Hi, you guys. Hi. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about the finale, and Michael, thank you for coming back for that. I think that was something we were all waiting for. That was cool, yeah. No, it was a, sorry, real quick, that was a big thing because he didn't have to. That was very much Michael yeah. doing that. It was, it was really strange, though, because when he showed up to set and he hadn't been there a few years, and we're like, what are you doing? And he's like, it's the finale. We're like, it's yeah, the finale. But... You made me love like... to say it. It's the finale. It's the finale. About? It's a serious finale. Where's, where's, where's my lines? Uh, give us a minute. <laughs> no, it's not true. I'm telling you, though, I came on, and I have a big head. Right? And they gave me a ball cap. I go, look, here's my demands. I got to come back for the fans. Seriously, I wanted to do it for the fans because that's it. Yeah. I didn't want people to say, why didn't you ever come back? And I wanted to do it. And it was a nice ending, a, a bookend. And, and so I came on set. So they had to put this thing up. So my head was even bigger. <laughs> so the ball cap, I go, you guys got to light me here. I look like a cone head. I look like <laughs> Dan Aykroyd. So, but it was really weird. And I was nervous again because I hadn't done Lex for three years. And I came back and I had to do this. And I was like, I, I feel weird. Am I doing this right? Am I? But we, we did it. We, yeah. you, you helped me get back into you it. Jump right back in. I remember the first take. Do you remember the giant crane in the Luther Mansion, mm -hmm. and it's just it's all, all destroyed. It's yeah. all destroyed, and it comes down on me to open it, and I go, "Fuck! What's the line?" <laughs> and I go, "Rosenbaum's back." <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for the f bomb, man. I didn't mean it. <laughs> didn't mean it. I usually don't do that. I usually say F, but not the whole word. <laughs> Sorry, you had a question. <laughs> um, you pretty much covered all the questions I had about the finale, oh. so thank you. Okay. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> all right, over here. Hello, Lieutenant Pierce. <laughs> I have to ask you a very serious question. This is for fan fiction purposes. On a scale from one to 10, how good of a kisser is Tom Ellis? <laughs> I mean, compared to Rosenbaum in the pilot? Yeah, I remember I gave him CPR. Oh, yeah. So that was actually the first one. He had soft, supple lips. <laughs> and most importantly, fresh, minty breath. Oh, oh he's so uh, we had a good, We had a good time with that, uh, Tom and I, because we were both like, we kind of, I mean, if you can imagine, you read that, you know, you're going to make out with, and we both kind of like, yeah, I guess we'll just do it. Like, we'll just, you you kissed? Just do it. I didn't see that well, one. Well, he kissed me. On the lips? Yeah. With tongue? No. <laughs> was that no. written? The, no, but we agreed upon it. Tongue? We agreed not to have tongue. Okay. Yeah. This and is going to be great enough, for your we, fan fiction. Oddly <laughs> enough, we both felt like we had to clarify with each other, like, so dude, uh, <clears throat> you know that scene the other day? He's like, oh yeah, it's going to be interesting. You know, that's horrible accident. But then we just talked about it and we're like, all right, I go, how about this? How about I just kind of look away when I, when I turn back, you just, just get it over with. And he goes, He's like, yeah, that's what Lucifer would do. And so it just it worked out perfect. We had a lot of fun shooting that episode. I bet you did. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And we had a director who was like, we just need one more. 
And that was like his joke, kind of like you were saying earlier. And he, so after about three or four takes, Tom and I were just like, you're done, that's it. We're not. Jason Isaacs, on, I did this movie called Sweet November and I was a transvestite. Yeah. The one person that saw it, thank you. I um, saw it, I saw it. But anyway, but we had a scene that, our, so we, they shot the scene at the end, and Jason Isaacs, he's a great actor, and he just goes, I think, I think we, should, uh, we should make out. And I go, uh, it's not written. <laughs> do, they have, do they have new sides that they passed out? Because I didn't, I didn't read that, he goes, no, I think it would be. Uh, I think it would be a nice. It's a nice ending, and we're like sitting in the background, and and uh, we think we should uh, we should really do it. And like, and I. But remember, I'm. I I just got to act like you know I'm an, I'm an actor. I'm like no, yeah we can. So I really didn't know what was gonna happen. I thought making out. Normally when you make out with a, a woman, young man. Or you make out with anyone. You start out with some tender kisses. Some slow mwah. And The fanfic and, writes itself. And you work your way into it. You don't just go, ah. Or you won't have another date. Just mwah, mm, And then ah. So that's, how, that's what I assume. I can't, I don't, I don't know how she's keeping how up with you. How are you doing this? This is hilarious. <laughs> So I, I, and Action, and Charlize, and Keanu, or whatever, they're hanging out, and Jason, we just, we hold hands, and he goes in, and he just goes right for the, ah. And I was like, ah. <laughs> And they cut the scene, thankfully. Because I bet it looked, if it looked as awkward as it felt. It was just, I mean, I tried, but you just gotta go in easy. I mean, you shouldn't say they cut it because more people would have gone out and watched that movie now. They'd be like, wait, we missed I that I think scene. more definitely need to go see it now. <laughs> Maybe you could see us kiss in the background. I don't remember. Right? I think they cut it. I really like Watch right. it so I get my three cents residual check. <laughs> I think we're over here. Thank you. Uh, evening, you know, Mr. Kent and Mr. Luthor. Uh, hmm. Your show, host, with its success, spawned more comic book shows like the Arrowverse on small, on a... CW, ABC's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., the Marvel Netflix shows, and, um... Flash, Goth Arrow, Krypton, Gotham, <laughs> um... Yes, and, Supergirl? um... Goth I was about to mention Gotham on Fox. Uh, with DC announced that they're gonna have their own streaming service, like with, um, uh, Titans, Young Justice Season 3, and um, the Harley Quinn animated series. Do you think there could be a chance for Smallville to return as a, a um, streaming service series for season 11 or an animated movie? I mean, animated could be fun. Yeah. I, I swear to God, I brought that up to Al at the creator of Smallville. I said, we should do an animated Smallville. I mean, because they're doing comic books. I haven't, I mean, I've just been yeah. seeing them this weekend. I guess the series continues. I don't know. Could you imagine? I mean, that would be huge. Smallville, the animated series. Yeah. With all our real voices. And all the guest stars that played certain guest stars, bring them in and just be cool. And are you going to introduce Batman in it? Yeah, I don't have to shave my head. <laughs> <laughs> we got to do that. Right. That would be so easy and fun. Can you imagine how some mics doing the same dialogue? <laughs> And laughing and just having fun. We're doing it. We're doing it. That would be epic. <laughs> and we don't have to look at each other. Yeah, we don't have to look at each other. I gotta tell you guys, we got time for two more questions. No way, one over man. here, this one is over good. here. This is a relief. I like this. I, but I gotta. The, you go people longer? are telling me so. You like this fun? Yeah. You guys. What do you mean no? <laughs> it's up Corey to them. Hart over here with the sunglasses I'm gonna, at night. I'm gonna have to bring down the hammer. We got one more over uh, here and one more over oh, here. So Tom, go ahead. Like, go ahead what was there. it like working for the late great Christopher Reeve, Tom? <laughs> I'm sorry. What was it like working for the late great Christopher Reeve? Oh, it was great. Um, he was a really fantastic person. Um, we talked a little bit about how um, his experience in the first Superman and about how they would they would kind of like Michael. They would put him on wires and. Kind of he'd be bouncing off the walls because they didn't know how exactly Superman flew and he was um, he had seen Smallville thought we were doing a great job and um, he was really just a fantastic person thank you
One more, last question, make okay. it good. In light of this week, a uh, Scooby Natural drop in, like the crossover, um, it, there was a joke script, I guess, uh, passed around with a supernatural fandom of the curse of the Superman, with basically Sam and Dean have to save you, uh, Tom Welling, from like this mysterious curse targeting all the actors who played <laughs> Superman. I just wondered. <laughs> I just wondered if you had any further reflections on that episode. And go, you, go. I don't know that exists, but how would they save me? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. How would they save I love those guys. I love those guys. No, I don't. I don't. I, I, that's the first I've heard of it. Oh, um, but those are great guys. We both know Justin and Jared very well. They've been doing a great job on their show. Jared asked me to come up and do an episode of Supernatural. Uh, how'd that go? <laughs> Well, he emailed, he emailed me. I go, hey, get on my podcast. He says, why don't you come up here and do an episode of Supernatural, and I'll do it. And I go, let's have a conversation. All right. Hey, before we go, yep. can we get a picture with us this way? Yeah, Everybody yeah. in the background, can we turn the lights on? The back lights <laughs> off, directing here. You want to be in the middle? No, I'm just... Here with Seymour. So you guys are in the back. Get that out of there. Cool. There you go. He's in there. Awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, you guys. Thanks, guys. Thank you so You've much. been wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give us a like. You can share it with some friends, and please feel free to leave a comment below. And don't forget to subscribe. And there's a little bell thing. If you click that, you get notifications when we have more videos coming out. See you next time.